All right, then. You have some essential information on scales and cards. You, have, you understand what notes you can play over the cards that will not clash or crunch. And you understand what to do anytime you play a note and it doesn't sound quite right. So, you are ready to embark on your improvisation. Well, what notes are you going to play? You want your improvisation to be lyrical, to flow, be poetic, expressive, inspired, romantic, songful, soulful, sweet sounding, melodic, imaginative, tuneful, yeah, all of those words and more. So, what notes are you going to play? Well, a scale only has seven notes and, and, and five semitones. Most of all of, the, all of the music in the Western world is written with those um, seven and five notes. So, what notes are you going to play? Right? Well, guess what? Musicians spend their whole life striving to play melodious improvisations. And they really just can't tell you how to do it. Okay? Of course, at the end of the day, the only person who is going to, who is going to be playing is you. But it's an art, all right? And somebody, you know, nobody can teach you an art. It's going to, be, it's going to have to be something that you discover and do for yourself. What there are, are some, let's say, basic ground rules, okay? And these I'm going to share with you. So all I can tell you is understand the ground rules and then take them and run with them. Right? By the way, if you've ever heard of Stan Getz, who made an album some years ago called Jazz Samba, he was one of the great lyrical improvisers, certainly for me. <laughs> well, it was a, well, I was a sax player one time. But of course, there are a lot of them. You know, Ike Quebec, Paul Desmond, Coleman Hawkins, Ben Webster, and so many others. All, uh, all, all very lyrical improvisers, you know. Um, you know what I would do? I, you know what? You know, I'd like to suggest to you to listen to some music, to some songs, you know, played by, by great musicians and learn from them. Right? Now, there is an easy way to, to listen to, 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 to these guys and I hope there's going to be enough room on the end of this video here for me to give you that, um, that heads up. Just remember that what is probably the most important thing is to listen to what you are playing. You know, and listen to the cards that are being played as you play. Because it is the card progressions that your improvisation 
is going to have to move along and harmonize with. And it is the, the chords that are going to keep you rooted to where you are in the song. You know, if the chord progressions are off, or if you cannot, um, or if you lose track of them, you know, and, and can't identify them, it's very possible that you're going to get lost, and you're not <laughs> you're not going to know quite where you are in the song, and you have a problem, right? So, listen. Listen as you play and listen to the cards. Okay. Now, starting off, you're going to improvise and you're going to start off. One of the easiest ways, maybe you could even say the very first thing that you could attempt to do, is to just play the melody of the song. But re as you go along, but replace some of the melody notes with other notes, you know, of your uh, of your um, devising. You know, Let's substitute some of the melody notes for, for for notes of your own, right? So you're going to be playing a song, you know, you're playing the melody, you 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 throw some of the melody notes, put in a little improvisation um, for, for maybe a bar. Or, or two, and go back on to the melody. You know, melody, short improvisation, melody, short improvisation going on. Now, that's very easy to do and a good way to get started. Well, tying in with that is, um, is just to take a, a short section of the song, of the melody. You know, play the melody. Take a short section of the song and improvise the short section and then go back on the melody again. Right? In this way, you, you, you get your feet wet, you, you could say. In this way, you don't get lost in the song because it's easy to do that. And this is a good way to start off. Now, a few days ago, I put, up, I, I put up this song, Don't Cry for me Argentina look for it you know in in, in, in YouTube and um, and listen to it because while playing that song I, I, I use you know those little techniques there and you'll get a good example go go, 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 to, go to YouTube bring up a Belgian Pied Piper and on my site look for don't cry for me Argentina and listen to it you you know, you'll understand what I'm saying right now I don't know if I'm, uh, I, I'm going to have enough time to to tell you about something very useful. I only have a minute and a half. I think that rather than start off here and not be able to, to explain it fully, um, would not be such a good idea. So I'm going to close down here now and continue over on episode number four. Okay, look in the margin notes for the link. I'll see you there momentarily. Take your time.